Okay. Yeah. When I disconnected everything, I forgot to recheck my audio. Great. Okay. Starting over. Hi, my name is Tiffany Hansen. Welcome to my live stream video. This is my very first live stream tutorial. I'm very excited about it. So how this is going to go, I'm going to begin this tutorial by showing you how to do the blanket, how to make the blanket. And then after I show you how to make the blanket, I'm going to do a Q&A session where you can ask me questions, whether it be in regards to the actual pattern blanket that I just showed you, or if you have another question that you would like to ask me, then would be a perfect time. I really wanted this to be a very inclusive tutorial where you felt a part of what was going on. And it helps a lot with me to answer questions right away. And I like the personal aspect where you can actually feel like you're talking to me. So if you have any questions while I'm doing the tutorial, you can still type them in the chat. That's great. I'm not going to be looking at the chat while I do the tutorial. I really want that to be smooth, fluid, and straightforward. And so afterwards, I will say, okay, now is a Q&A session time. I'll go through questions and I will answer whatever I can. Uh, if you notice on the chat, you'll see a little smiley face and a little dollar sign there. I am open to super chats and super stickers. So if you would like to donate anything to my channel, all proceeds go towards me purchasing materials so that I can continue to give you some awesome tutorials but that's not something you have to do. It does help with my attention because when I see one of those, it really sticks out. So if you have a question, you can always throw a super sticker on there and it helps catch my eye. And again, I will address all of those in the Q and A session, making sure I say thank you to all of you for supporting my channel. But other than that, let me shift my camera. Uh, if you, you missed that before, cause there was no audio. <laughs> But I thought that I could switch from webcam on my computer to webcam that I have right here. And I was unable to switch. I'm still new to live, so I might figure that out in the future. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shift my camera. I'm going to start with the tutorial. And I'm very excited. Now let me actually throw in to the chat where you can find the pattern. This is a little different, and it comes to... When it comes to all the information, there is no like description section right off the bat. You have to wait for the description section. So let me insert where you can find the pattern. Great, so I just inserted into the chat the link where you can find the pattern. If you'd like to print that off and be ready to crochet with me, you absolutely can. This pattern is super simple, so you don't necessarily need the pattern, but it's nice to have on hand for reference points. All right, let me shift my camera and we'll get started with this amazing tutorial. Don't you love just how real this is? Oh my gosh. The, this is so real. This is what we do as tutorial creators. You just never see this. <laughs> okay, great. The materials that you're going to need to make this blanket, I used Yarn B, Yarn ID. This whole camera thing is flipped, but it is Yarn B, Yarn ID in the color stone or blue stone. I used a crochet hook size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook, pair of scissors and a yarn needle, tapestry needle, just to help us weave in our ends at the end of the project. To make this blanket, this blanket measures 38 inches wide by 40 inches long. My instructions are all going to be in US terminology. I will try to slip in some UK terminology in there for all of you amazing UK people that are watching. Welcome, welcome. Um. All right, that is it. That's all we really need. So let's move on to the tutorial. This stitch for the inside of the blanket is just a half double crochet back loop only stitch. That's it. <laughs> so it's really simple to follow. Um, but for you newbies, I really want to make sure that this was a baby blanket for an absolute beginner that looks amazing 
to follow. I'll include pictures all at the end. I'll even show off the blanket at the end. I like to begin with a long enough tail for us to weave in our end at the end of the project. Usually I start with about four inches, but if you like longer than that, go for it. Creating the slip knot, attaching the crochet hook. Here we go. Okay, so for this particular baby blanket, I start with a chain of 122. Because I have you on live stream, I'm not gonna make you wait that long. So I'm only going to, you want to have the foundation row chain be in a multiple of six plus two. That is the magic foundation row chain count requirement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just a smaller swatch to get us through. If it needs to be in a multiple of six plus two, I'm gonna make mine 26 chains, all right? So let's just get through this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You guys are awesome for hanging in there. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Great. Okay. For row one, first stitch is going to be in the third chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, our chains, one, two, three, make a half double crochet stitch in that third chain. Boom, right there. Okay, so that chain two that we skipped to turn, we're going to count that as our very first half double crochet stitch. Cool. Then you just make one half double crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. Super simple, nothing crazy. You guys got me shaking here. Ah, rock stars, man. Okay. This is the only part of the tutorial I was actually a little nervous about. I was like, they're gonna have to wait and watch me finish a row because usually I would cut this out. But you guys, you're awesome. Thank you so much for just hanging in there with me. Maybe you like watching somebody just randomly crochet. I don't know, let me know in the chat. Do you like watching somebody just crochet? Some people find it very therapeutic. La la la. And I hum and I sing and get through this row. Half double crochets. I promise this is almost over. Here we go. Na, na, na. I should have background music. That's what I should do next time. What do you think? Some tranquil spa background music. Okay, last chain here. Boom. All right, so that's row one. When we're ready to move on to row two, all you have to do is chain one. Turn your work. And then for row two, you're making a half double crochet in the back loop only. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you turn your stitches, your work to the top and you see those Vs, those gorgeous V stitches there on the top. That's the front loop. And that's the back loop. So front, back. We're going to yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the V stitch, like right there. Go through the back loop only. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all three. That's a half cro double crochet back loop only. And that's what you do in every stitch all the way across. Half double crochet, back loop only. That's it. All right, and I'm not gonna finish the row there because that's all you're doing. Half double crochet, back loop only in every stitch all the way across. When you get to the end of row two, you will just chain one, turn your work and do that all over again. Half double crochet, back loop only, in each stitch all the way across. When you're working the blanket, because the blanket is, you begin with 122 chains, for row one through the end of row 81, you will have 120 stitches in each row. Super simple. 
That's the pattern. It's amazing. Love it. Okay. So I fast forwarded for you. Oh, I came prepared. Yes, I did. Because I know what it feels like. Okay. When it comes to the border of this blanket, the border of this blanket is the only part of this blanket that has a stitch count requirement. You need to have a multiple of six along this top part of your row. And then for this particular pattern, you only need to have a multiple of three rows. Okay. So for this little swatch, I have 27 rows. It's divisible by three. For the main blanket pattern, you go to the row or end of row 81. Again, 81 is divisible by three. So let's go ahead and say you finish your blanket. For those newbies out there who are just beginning and diving into a blanket project, welcome. So you finish row 81, cut your yarn, leaving yourself a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends at the end of the project. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop, yank it tight, and you have fastened off your blanket. All right, flip your blanket over. We're ready to attach yarn for the border itself. If you are using the same exact color, you do not need to cut your yarn. You would just continue on to the border. I just made that cut so that way I could show you how to tie off your project if you needed to. Starting with a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends at the end of the project, create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and before I start on the border, I wanted to welcome everybody for joining my chat. Thank you for joining my live stream. You are rock stars. Thank you for going through this with me. I appreciate you being here. To attach your yarn to the project, you slip stitch in the top right-hand corner. I see that it shows the left-hand corner. Just now notice everything is flipped <laughs> on this video. That's great. I will make sure when at the end of this video, I will show both versions, right-handed and left-handed version so you don't feel lost. Slip stitch in that top corner, stitch, chain two. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to my pattern. No, you're going to chain six. One, hold on, pause. Nope, I'm getting ahead of myself. See, this is all stuff that I would edit out. You're seeing all of my like flops. Okay, so. <laughs> Very first stitch, you're going to single crochet in that very first stitch. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being here with me. Now you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. In the second chain that we just made, you're going to make a single crochet. In the third chain, you're going to make a half double crochet. In the fourth chain, you are going to make a double crochet. And in the fifth chain, you will make a treble crochet. A treble crochet, you're gonna wrap over once or yarn over once, yarn over twice, insert your crochet hook into the chain, yarn over again, You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And in that sixth chain, you're going to make a double treble stitch. If you have no idea what a double treble stitch is, that's okay. We're going to yarn over four times, or sorry, three times. One, two, three. Then insert our crochet hook into the chain, pull through, one, two, three, four. That's what I meant, four there. So you will see what looks like a growing triangle. Skip five stitches. Let me look at my pattern here. Yep, skip five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in the sixth stitch. Single crochet. And then repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
single crochet into the second chain. One, half double crochet in the third chain, double crochet in the fourth chain, treble crochet in the fifth chain, one, two, three, and double treble in the fifth or in the sixth chain. Sorry, last chain here, double treble. So three wraps, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Skipping five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet in the sixth stitch. Again, if you are just joining, I'm gonna continue making this row. Um, if you are just joining this live video, I did put a link to the pattern in the chat if you would like to check that out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Grab that pattern so that way you can crochet along with me. That would be great. After this pattern, after I'm done showing this demonstration, I'm going to do a live Q&A. So if you have any questions about either this pattern or if you have any questions about any of my other patterns or just a, a general crochet question, I am going to be chatting with you live to answer those. I also have some super chats and super stickers that if you would like to donate to my channel just to help provide me some funds to purchase supplies for tutorials, that's it's all going to go back into this channel. And I really help, I really appreciate all, but that's absolutely up to you, not necessary. One, two, three, four, five, single crochet. All right, last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, single crochet in the second, half double crochet in the third, double crochet in the fourth, treble crochet in the fifth, one, two, three, and double treble in the sixth. One, two, three, four. I just now realized that I said that I would help out my UK friends with some terminology and I have not done that so far. So the half double crochet stitches located in the pattern. In the UK, these stitches are all known as half treble crochets. Okay, so you're working a half treble crochet in the back loop only throughout the pattern. When it comes to these Vs or these triangles we are making, we chain six, then you will double crochet in the first, half treble crochet in the second, treble crochet in the third, double treble in the fourth or fifth, and then you will, I think it's called triple treble in the sixth, all right? I will try to help you out with that terminology. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the Q&A session <laughs> at the end of this video. And then you're just going to single crochet in the very last chain or last stitch here. All right, we're going to shift. Shift this over, start working along the sides. Now the sides of the blanket are, are the most daunting part of a blanket border. I'm gonna take all that away from you, all right? Chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, making our way down, single crochet, half double, double, there we go, treble, one, two, three, and double treble. One, oh, did I double treble? I did not. One, two, three. That's a double treble. One, two, three, four. That's what I was looking for. Okay. If you look at these peaks, if you look at the project, you see these defining peaks. Between each defining peak is two rows. So really you can count how many rows you are working by just counting the peaks. So here's one peak that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. Okay, 
you will skip two rows and single crochet in the third row along the side. So if I have one, two, three, I'm going to single crochet in the side of the third row. There we go. And then I'm gonna repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, single crochet, half double, double, one, two, treble, one, two, three, and double treble. Three over yarn overs. One, two, three, four. Skip three rows. So this row already has something in there. So one, two, three, or sorry, skip two, single crochet in the third. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, so that's how you work the side of your blanket border. Skip two, single crochet in the third row. All the way down. I'm not going to painfully make you watch me make my way all the way around. That's just too crazy. So I'm going to stop my work right here. You're going to approach every corner the same way. You will end up single crocheting in the very corner last stitch and then chain six and just flip your work and start working along the other side. Okay. Okay. So you repeat this pattern all the way around your blanket. You will slip stitch in the very first chain. I'm sorry, you will slip stitch in the very first single crochet that we started with to close off row one of your blanket border. So I will just attach my yarn here, pretending I just slip stitched to close off row one, ready for row two. Row two of your blanket border, you will chain, let me, get, let me look over here. I wanna make sure I say this right for you. Okay. You will start by chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that first five chains counts as your first double treble. You'll single crochet on the very top of the next triangle. Single crochet. Chain four. One, two, three, four. And then double treble in that single crochet stitch right here. One, two, three, in the single crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, and then repeat. So you'll single crochet in the top of that next triangle. Chain four, one, two, three, four, and then double treble, in that single crochet stitch, three yarn overs, single crochet stitch, one, two, three, oops, I dropped it, four, single crochet in the top of that triangle. Great, and repeat, one, two, three, four, double treble, three yarn overs, one, two, three, four, top of the triangle. I'm trying to get to the corner because I want to show you how to work the corner. There we go. Okay, we're in the corner stitch here. How we do this, start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And then I make three double trebles in that corner stitch to really help round out that corner. One, two, three. And that single crochet stitch in the corner. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's one. Two. One, two, three. Three, perfect. And then chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. And then repeat the pattern. One double treble 
in the single crochet stitch to begin that row. One, two, three, four, and then single crochet on top of that triangle. Chain four, one, two, three, four, double treble. One, two, three, four, and single crochet on top here. All right, I think you got that down. That is row two of your blanket border, how you will work that. Pretty easy, right? Cut that, finish that off. All right, last row, last thing we're gonna do for this blanket border, last thing we're gonna do for this blanket. Row three of our blanket border. What you would end up doing is you'd make your way all the way up this side, do your corner three double trebles, chain four, and then you would slip stitch into the top fifth chain. So one, two, three, four, five. You'd slip stitch into that fifth chain and that would close off row two of your blanket border, okay? To begin row three, you'll chain one, single crochet in that same stitch you just slip stitched into. And really all you are doing for row three is making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around this blanket. The only difference is the corners. Let me get to the corner. I'll show you how to work that, super easy. But really all row three is, is single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch. These look like little sailboats, aren't those cute? Did not anticipate them looking like sailboats. Really, honestly, the pattern that I was following just said triangles. And in theirs, it looked like a triangle, but when I do it, it looks more like a sailboat. And I'm like, you know what? That is actually really cute. All right. Oh. Getting there, getting there. We are almost done. Go so close, okay. Almost to that corner. Okay, so making my way one, two, three, four. When I comes to when I come to the corner and I see the three double treble stitches here, I will single crochet in the top of the first. In the second, this is where it gets different. In the second double treble, I will single crochet, chain two, one, two, and then single crochet again in that same stitch. And it makes, it's kind of a pico stitch, not really, but it makes just this little bump for the corner. And then I continue on making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Okay, so that, is row three of your blanket border. That's it. The only big difference is in each of the four corners, when you come to your three double trebles, that middle double treble stitch, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. That's it. When you make your way all the way around this blanket, you will slip stitch into the very first single crochet and you're done. That's it. That's how you make this blanket, guys. So easy, so simple. Okay, give me a second. Let me turn this camera back around so I can talk to you in person. Hey, welcome to my office. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to my office. <laughs> this is my amazing room. I plan on doing a little tour of my brand new built-in cute little section over there on my Instagram page. So if you're not on my Instagram or my Facebook, you're going to want to go there for that. That's going to be really cute. Okay. So that's it. That's this blanket. Let me show you. This is the finished product. Move chair. That's the border. What it looks like. This is the size. This is what I have in the pattern for you to make. This is 
120 stitches across, 100 or 81 rows. That's it. I got some great pictures on the pattern. All right, so we have finished with the tutorial. I hope it was okay. Tried to get through it smooth, but not too fast. I know one of the concerns when I, I brought this to the table for some people on my Instagram page, one person said, I just hope it doesn't go too fast. So I hope it didn't go too fast when I do release this video. Um, onto my channel, you will be able to control the speed of it. So if you need to go slower, that's perfectly fine. But let me go now to the chat and it's time to start our Q&A. Are you ready for this? Okay, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to have you guys really be a part of this with me. Okay, let's see. Here we go. So again, welcome everybody to my chat. I do see that I have a super, super sticker, super chat from Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly, for that. You are amazing. Thank you so much, John Hansen, my husband, for this <laughs> the super chat. Thank you. Love you. And again, in this whole part, if you look at the chat, you'll see a little emoji. You'll see a little dollar sign. If you choose to donate to my channel, all proceeds go back to my channel just to help me purchase supplies, material, and continue providing awesome tutorials for you. So thank you. Okay, let me see. It also helps draw my attention to any really important questions. So if you have a super uh, big question or something you really want to draw my attention to, that really helps me as well. Okay. Good, people could hear me. I'm so sorry about not having audio to begin with. Okay. Uh, do you have patterns for beds for dogs and cats? Not yet, but I do have a really good idea for one. I have this really big foam mat and I plan on cutting the foam mat to create like a headboard or a back of a couch kind of look. And then I'm gonna crochet around that. What I'm really thinking is it's either gonna be single crochet stitches or half double crochet stitches, something large or small enough where it's not going to have a bunch of holes in it, but that it will. Thank you, Nancy. Love you. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate the, or the sticker. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so the dog bed, it will be a lot of fun. It should be very simple a simple construction, but the stitches, I don't want them to be too wide or too big. So that way you can see the foam mat or foam pad underneath it. Um, so hopefully that will be coming. Uh, questions if you. Oh, thank you so much, Emma. She said, if you're here in the chat, make sure you like the chat, make sure you like the video just to show YouTube support to check this out, uh, making a grocery bag. So uh, in talking about making a grocery bag, I'm assuming this is like a tote bag for the grocery store. I can absolutely make more of a boxy square looking one. That would be a super simple design. You could also, if you haven't checked it out yet. So who asked this question? Judy, if you haven't checked out my Halloween trick or treat bags. I know it's it sounds silly, but if you were to eliminate the face and change the color, that would make a super cute just small little tote bag for groceries, but I can absolutely look into the construction of more of a boxy shopping bag for you. It would be a simple construction. Um hi from England. I love that people from the UK are joining. Thank you so much. Um, Canada, Mississippi, only 15 likes. That's okay. Why is blanket small? So this blanket size, I, I did show you the demo. I, I picked it up and I held it up for you to show you how it would hit my body. And let me do that again. So if this is a baby blanket, this is hitting dimension size for a receiving blanket. That's that's how big it is. And if it's coming there on me, 
that's going to be great for baby. So if you do want to make this blanket in a bigger size, I do show how to adjust the pattern. You want to just make sure if you're using this blanket border on the blanket anyway, uh, the blanket border is the only thing with a stitch count requirement. And that needs to be a multiple of six stitches wide. And with this pattern being half double crochets, just a multiple of three rows long. Okay, so you can make this as big as you want, as small as you want. With uh, If you're going to do a different border, then you really don't have to worry about stitch count requirements. The blanket is a one-to-one -one ratio, and you can make that as big as you want. <laughs> um, okay, looking through questions. Oh, yes, I see right here where I asked if you liked wa just watching crochet because th that's one thing about the live tutorial is I have to get to the next step. So you're just kind of watching me get there. So it is nice. Sometimes I like to watch people just crochet to it. It is relaxing to me. Um. Do, do, do. I love how you all like are talking and chatting. I'm seeing all of your amazing comments. I'm just trying to find a question, <laughs> but that's okay. If you don't have questions, if you just want to be here and just, hi, <laughs> you're here with me. You have my time. This is all here. Oh, thank you for reminding me. If this goes well, if, if you guys do end up liking the live tutorials and this live Q and A and being able to just hang out with me and feel like you can be present with me, I will continue doing this on the third Friday of every month, making sure it's a simple tutorial that's easy to get through, nothing too complicated that will require a lot of waiting. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun. Just Bring your questions. Hang out with me. Let's let's chat. Let's do this together. Yes, I apologize. When so originally when I did this, when I had this all set up, uh, the camera I thought that I could switch camera views. So I was going to use the webcam on my computer along with this camera that I have, but it did not give me that option. So. When I am using this camera right here and I flip it to do the tutorial, I didn't realize that it had flipped the whole video and it looks like everything's left-handed, which is great for my left-handed viewers. <laughs> You're like, yes, this is fantastic. For my right-handed viewers, this is this is backwards, which I'm sure you lefties are so used to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, after this is all done, I'm gonna try to flip the video for my right-handed viewers so you can see everything the way it makes sense to you. Can anyone tell me about yarn? The yarn is it acrylic? Okay, so I had a question about the yarn. This yarn, the yarn bee, it is. It's just a size four weight worsted weight Aran yarn, um, ten twelve ply. It is eighty percent acrylic and twenty percent polyamide. Okay. You can find it at Hobby Lobby. I did include a link to get this exact yarn in the description section below this video. Um, you can use the link. I'm not affiliated with Hobby Lobby, but I love their yarn. Um, if you want, you can just use a size four weight, worsted weight, Aran size yarn. Replace the yarn with whatever you have on hand in your yarn stash or a color that you really like. Okay. Okay. Oh, huh. I had somebody say, I'm sure there's a different way of holding the hook or I hold the hook differently. So I, I mentioned this in the beginner's tutorial that I have seen so many yarn tutorials and so many different ways of holding your crochet hook and holding your yarn tension. So many people hold their hands way different. So it is really cool to see how different people hold their crochet hook, hold their yarn different ways, but do whatever works, feels best for you.
Uh -huh. In one of your videos, you spoke about how many years you have been crocheting. You must have been two or three when you started. You look so young. Oh, it's the moisturizer. You got to moisturize. You got to take care of this. <laughs> I'm 36 years old. Boom. Throwing that out there. I have two kids. My daughter is turning 13 in May. My son is 10. Um, yeah. So I start crocheting when I was five, six years old. I crocheted really young. I, and when I say I crocheted, I don't mean I was like whipping out projects. I mean, I was making a chain. I was doing a single crochet. I honestly think my grandmother only taught me a chain stitch. She may have taught me a single crochet stitch. Everything else I learned on my own further on in life. Um, I was a closet crocheter in middle school and high school. I thought it was not cool. I was kind of embarrassed, but I loved to do it. I made blankets for my family. I'm not saying they were good, but <laughs> I would make blankets for my family members. And uh, so I've been crocheting, yeah, since I was about five, six years old. But I think that's really sweet that you thought that I must have started when I was two or three. That's 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 cute. Uh, My grandson is almost three and he likes some holes. Oh, this border will be great for him. Yeah, half double crochets. I'm getting, I'm seeing a few of these where people are saying half double crochets are their favorite stitch. It's one of my favorite stitches too. It's very beautiful for being so simple. And it's great for those absolute beginner crocheters. It looks like shark fins too. Hey, you want to say the shark fins? Say the shark fins. I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> okay. What do you do when you're halfway and you notice your lines are not straight? Okay. This is a great question. If you get halfway through your blanket or a significant chunk way into your blanket and you notice my, the sides of my blanket are not straight. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to count how many stitches are in your row. I would honestly, with any blanket, periodically like count how many stitches are in each row just to keep yourself in check, just to make sure you are staying on track and that you haven't added or dropped a stitch anywhere. That has been a common mistake for me. I'll admit that right here. Um, it's a very common mistake for most crocheters. Uh, to just somewhere in the process of making your project, you add a stitch or drop a stitch somewhere in there. But if you are noticing it in a significant way into your blanket that the sides aren't straight, I would start by counting how many stitches are in the row you're working on right now. Okay. If you are, depending on if your blanket is caving inward or flaring outward, if your blanket is caving inward on one side. What I would do is I would increase single crochet or I would increase a stitch, whatever stitch you're using, increase a stitch somewhere in inside the blanket. Okay. Um, what that will do is it will help slowly bring your blanket back to where it needs to be. And don't put a bunch of increases right next to each other. Space they evenly space them out through the row so that way it doesn't all of a sudden look like there's a bubble or a warp <laughs> in one spot of your blanket. Like, why is your blanket warped right there? Oh, that's where I added stitches. Don't do that. Just place an increased stitch intermittently through that one row. Um, start small. Don't just instantly, like if you're lacking 10 stitches, you don't want to be like, adding 10 stitches in that row. Maybe I would add three and then the next row, add another three, next row, add another three, and then one or add four in that last row just to slowly build it back up. And then your blanket should come back to being even on both sides. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a tutorial on how to cover up a very uneven side. And this will just kind of entail creating an overlapping blanket border. This is something that's going on in my brain. Tell me if you are 
thinking it's a good idea or not. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in this. But what I'm thinking about doing is making a tutorial on uh, a border to your blanket that wraps over your blanket and then you cr either crochet or sew it to your blanket and then it will deceivingly make it look like everything is straight. <laughs> I think this is going to be a cool idea, especially for people that struggle with, I just spend so much time on this blanket and I don't want to undo anything. Let me just do a quick fix to cover that up. I think it's possible to do that cover up. So let me uh, tell me if you think that would be a good idea, a good tutorial. All right. Hello from Portugal. Well, hello, Christina. I love hearing people around the world, along with people in my own backyard. I swear one day somebody's going to see me in the grocery store. I've been I've been getting so hello, so many hellos from people from Texas. And I'm like, that day will come. They'll be like, hey, I know you. If you're in the middle of a blanket and your line doesn't go straight, okay, I just, oh, I must have gone up a little bit. Um, dog blanket. Dog blankets are really, really simple. You want to keep dog blankets very simple. A uh, single crochet stitch wouldn't go bigger than a half double crochet stitch, really, because then their paws, their nails get in between the stitches. Um, I love loopy crochet and treasures. Thank you so much for the super chat super sticker. It says you are awesome, Tiffany. Lots of love. Thank you so much for that, supporting my channel. I love the top you're wearing. Did you make it? That's a great, a, a great question. So the top that I'm wearing right now, this sweater, I did not make it. It's from Express. It's three years old. <laughs> I love it. I love knit sweaters. Honestly, I think it's kind of funny. I think knit clothing looks gorgeous. I absolutely love knit clothing, uh, but I don't know how to knit. I'm not, I'm no good at knitting. <laughs> I could make a scarf. I could make a very basic blanket, but when it comes to clothing, I think knit clothing is gorgeous. This I did buy from a store. Wish I could have made it. That would have been awesome. But honestly, for how much money I probably would have spent on materials and the time it would have taken to make this, I'm glad that I was able to purchase it. <laughs> um, something different. Oh, okay. Tony, you said you don't have any place to heart this chat. Don't worry. Uh, once this video, once I end this chat, this live chat, and it goes, uploads to the channel, that is a place where you can thumbs up or like this video. I'm I'm not worried about it right now. I'm really ne never really worried about it. If you like the video, I'm so happy that you like the video. If you want to push that thumbs up button, it just, it communicates to YouTube that it's a good video. So I just really appreciate that, but it's okay if you can't find it. All right. Kimberly Nicole, thank you so much. Mwah. Thank you so much. Because I've been following your crochet journey. Thank you so much for being a part of Michelson. Mwah. Thank you so much. For Supporting my channel. You are amazing. Says you have taught me how to crochet and I love it. I'm so happy I was able to teach you how to do this. I really hope that you continue to make beautiful things and just thrive and allow this to just bring peace and comfort and joy to your life. I have a bunch of open videos currently on my channel. Um, questions, questions. I have a question. Do you know when to use the chain up at every round as a stitch and when to not use the chain up and in the same stitch? That's where I get confused. Okay, one second. I, how do you know when to use the chain up at every round as a stitch 
and when not to use the chain up. Okay, so Richie and Christina Tafoya, you asked me a question about chaining up. I'm not sure if I completely understand the question. You're, you're talking about working in rounds, so I'm assuming that you're working in a circle, and you're talking about chaining up to get to the next round. Um, oh, me. Are you referring to slip stitching and chaining to get to the next row opposed to working in continuous rounds? That is kind of what I'm getting from this question. If that's not what you meant, please re-ask your question. But um, what I'm getting from this is when working in a round, when working in a circle, when to know if you need to slip stitch to end the round and then chain one to get to your next round or when to just continue working into the next round. Now, this is really completely personal. Uh, you can really take this and make it up to you. Uh, I like to work in closed rounds where I will work the round and then slip stitch to close the round and then chain one to get myself to the next round and then start working that round. I will use that method when I need my rows to be perfectly straight. Because if I can make my way all the way around the circle and then slip stitch to close that circle, it looks more perfectly circular. Opposed to if I'm working in continuous rounds, it makes more of a spiral effect. Um, if I am making a beanie or if I'm making something where I will be color changing and that one color will be sticking out significantly, uh, then I will close the loop and then chain one to get to the next row. That way those color changes stay in the perfect circle. When I'm making a stuffed animal, and I'm continuing the same exact color through every round, it is easier for me to just dive into a continuous spiral-ish uh, round. That way I can just keep moving, keep going, and everything looks seamless. What you will notice with the slip stitch chain one is there's more of an abrupt uh, seam there. You will see a line and a, sorry. <laughs> I'm talking, I don't know if you're like getting the whole, hand gestures that I'm doing. Uh, when you're working in, uh, in stopped circular rounds, uh, you'll see like a dividing line, a defining line right there where every row will start and stop. Uh, I like how continuous rounds kind of make that disappear. So it really depends on the project and depends on the person. You can use those continuous rounds whenever you want to, or you can just slip stitch to close, chain one to get to next row and use that for every project if you want. So that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, oh, 36 is young, you're right. 36 is young. And I'm going to continue to say 36, 46. And I'm looking forward to my 40s. I know I have friends that when they hit 30, they just like died a little inside. And I was like, you know what? When I hit 30, I threw a party. I was so excited to get into my 30s and I'm actually even more excited to get into my 40s because I'm like 40s are going to be like my freedom years. Right now, my kids are very active. Um, they're in not quite. I mean, COVID is starting to make things a little easier, but um, I'm hoping to get them into sports soon, get them outside and get them active. And the, the calendar is filling up, man. Anybody else feel like time is just flying? I'm just like, slow down, <laughs> slow down, please. <laughs> it feels like every month is a week long. Um, oh, see, my husband is watching right now. And uh, he's saying he's uh, definitely participating in the chat. And he's saying your blanket is why I married you. So this is, this is really funny. Personal story. High school closet crocheter and been my my gift to her made fun of me and called me and wished I hand created this big blanket and that was my gift to him and we still have it we do it's it's got it, it it's been well loved and it has 
gone through some moves with us and it has some big holes in it now, unfortunately, but we still have it. And thanks, Ben. Um, any other questions? Okay, if I do miss your question, um, I apologize. Make sure that once I finish, finalize this video, that you ask it again in the uh, in the comment section below the video so I can make sure I get to it. I don't want to miss any questions. Um, okay, what do you think if I use a really thick yarn? Uh, if you are using a really thick yarn on this particular blanket, you can do it. You could absolutely do that. Uh, your chain, your stitch count, or your stitch count will be different because your stitches will be bigger. So you won't need to make as many, um, and you won't need to make as many rows either. You're going to want to check out my video on how. Um, check out my video on how to measure a blanket. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna recommend that one. On how to measure a blanket out. I talk about meeting stitch count requirements for any pattern, uh, how to do that, making sure you are making the width requirement, making sure you hit the length requirement. You're gonna wanna check out that video because if you're using a different size, a thicker size yarn than I'm using, which you absolutely can, um, you're going to need to adjust your stitches. And if you are using the same border, the border is the only thing with the stitch count requirement that you need to worry about. Okay, so it's a great question. Um, have you thought about having moderations for your lives? I mod for several channels and would be happy to mod for you. Oh, I have, honestly, I'm so new to live. This is my first actual live Q and A. Hi. <laughs> I've only ever done lives for giveaways and my giveaways it took me a while to get comfortable with lives even now I was I was okay I was okay with you get nervous because when um, you're live there's no oh I can edit that out there's no oh I can cut that out and I have a tendency to ramble I do and I have a tendency to uh, have gaps between my words case in point <laughs> So uh, I don't have a moderator, but it is something that if I start doing a lot of these, I might need. So thank you for reaching out. Can you hold up the blanket so I can see it? Okay. the blanket. Here's the border. I still have to wave in my ends. Don't judge. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to take uh, the border off and just redo it with you or if I was going to do the small swatch and I ended up doing the small swatch. So, And I have a lot more pictures of angles and how shadows hit it and how the textures look in the pattern itself. And I will see if I can add any pictures to this video later. I I'll see if I can do that. Um, okay, so my blanket border rounds up instead of looking like a point. That's okay. Thank I think mine does the same thing. That's why I said they look like sailboats a little bit, or some people say they look like shark teeth. Mentioned, I saw that, I saw that little comment. It's okay. If, if it bothers you, if you really want it to look like a point, you could probably block your blanket after you've completed it. If you're not sure how to block it, this yarn that I used is, it works fine. It can wash. It's wash and dry accessible. So you could just submerge this blanket into some water, wait till it has absorbed as much water as it can, then 
lay the blanket flat how you want it to look as a finished product, like pin it down, pin it pointed. If you want your border to look pointed, pin it down so it's pointed, let it air dry, and then it should keep that shape until you have to wash it again. How do you feel about using a foundation row as opposed to starting with a chain? I haven't played around with it yet. Uh, I've heard a couple people talking about just starting with the foundation row opposed to starting with a chain. And I need to, I need to play around with that. I, right now I find it easiest to begin talking or starting the project with a foundation chain so I can set you up for chain count requirement. Um, it just helps to helps to me explain it. It also, I feel it helps with my absolute beginners who don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but I can, I can play with starting with a chain and see if I can incorporate that into a tutorial and see how I feel about it, how I like it. And I will let you know. Good question though. Thank you for asking. I love the idea of covering up a cover-up border. I think that's what it'll be. It'll be called the cover-up border for any blanket that needs, uh, or the side isn't perfect and you want to just cover it up. Can it be steamed? Okay, so... From what I've learned from um, all blocking options is that there is three different types of blocking. If you are a super blocker, you know blocking how to block a project really well, correct me uh, in the comment section or in the chat. I believe there's three different ways that you can block a blanket. The first is to um, submerge or just soak the project. Uh, and then lay it out, pin it down, and let it air dry. The second is to pin it down first and then spray it with a squirt bottle. And don't submerge it, but just get it wet, damp enough where it's flexible. And Or you could make it damp first and then pin it down how you want it to look. And then wait for it to air dry and it will hold form. And the third way is to take an iron it with a steamer or even just like a steamer that just produces steam. Take your project, pin it down first, and then take steam and uh, have the steam go on the project to loosen up the fibers. Once the fibers are loosened, make sure everything is where you want it to be. Again, air dry and it should hold form. The one thing that you never ever want to do is iron a project which makes it scary when you actually use an iron with a steamer because if the iron touches the project, then I've heard it's called shocking your project or killing your project in which the fibers never uh, change form. But it also can affect the feel of the fibers as well. So you, you never want to iron your crochet projects. If you didn't know that before, now you do. Okay. Hello, my okay. What size was the yarn? The yarn was a size four weight worsted, Aaron medium, 10, 12 ply. I think it's an eight WPI. Wherever you are in the world, it's one of those, same size. Um, okay, so. Nancy Berkey, you must be referring to my giveaway. My giveaway video was, uh, I think it was last week, last week. It's a different live. I did already select a winner uh, and I've already gotten in contact with her. So what drawing? Yeah, Daisy, I think, I think that was, she was referring to my uh, 100,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, If you block a project, does it keep it its shape? It keeps its shape until you wash it again, and then you have to re-block it. Because you just you're affecting the fibers, and if you wash it, it changes the fibers again, and you need to re-pin it down and let it air dry to hold shape. Awesome. 
All right, cool. I think I have answered everything. I think I've gotten to the very bottom of this chat. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for being a part of something brand new. I was really testing this out, seeing if it was something that you would enjoy. So it's all new, doing a tutorial and a Q&A. Uh, after I've finished off this video, let me know. Did you enjoy it? What did you think? Is there something that I could do better, something I could do different? Do you have any tutorial, uh, quick, tiny, fast tutorial requests that you would like me to incorporate in my next quick project live tutorial. Again, these tutorials, I want them to be very simple so that way it's not so much detail that we have to get through in order to complete the project. I want it to be something very quick and easy. And I think this blanket is just that. I hope you enjoy the blanket. I hope you love it. Uh, and thank you so much for being a part of this with me. I hope you have the best day and I will see you very soon with my next tutorial next week. So let's see if I can actually end the stream live uh, better this time than I did last time.